I'm Dr. Blanche Gruby, and I'd like to take a few minutes and explain to you why I'm so passionate about biological dentistry. I have to get a little historical. The story started in 1992. In 1992, I had a patient who came to me and asked me if I thought her fillings were making her sick. Now, my answer to her was pretty much what I've always said to other people was, well, you know, we've been doing fillings for 150 years. Nobody's ever dropped dead out of my office. So, you know, I think the fillings are perfectly okay and I don't think they're making you sick. Well, thank God this patient went ahead and researched it on her own. She came back the next day with an article. She was very excited. She said, Dr. Gruby, would you read this article? And I said, sure, I'm open-minded. I'll read the article. Well, the article was written by Dr. Sandra Denton. She was a medical physician that was working for Dr. Hal Huggins in Colorado Springs at the time. The article was all about mercury toxicity. It talked about how mercury affects your mental capacity. It talked about how mercury affects your digestive system. It talked about how mercury affected your mood, how mercury affected every organ system in the body. What was fascinating was that there wasn't a single article written by a dentist. I took that article and I ran to the library here in Scranton and I gave it to the librarian at Mercy Hospital. As you can tell from my accent, I'm a New Yorker. So, hey, you know, I wasn't going to have anybody pull the wool over my eyes. So I took it to the librarian and I asked her, hey, could you check this out and see if these are real journals or are they bogus? the Journal of Ionizing Chemistry. I uh, never heard of it. I don't read that. It's not on my coffee table. Let me know if it's real. Okay. She said, sure, I'll do that for you, doctor. The next day she calls me up and she says, Dr. Gruby, I have your articles for you. What articles? I didn't want any articles. I just wanted to know if they were bogus journals. She said, well, I thought they were very interesting and I thought you might want to read them. Okay. So I went down to the library again, picked up a stack of articles like this, and started reading. I was blown away. There were articles written by biochemists, by microbiologists, by physiologists, by psychiatrists, by every kind of specialty you can imagine. Again, not a single article written by a dentist. At the bottom of the article, it did say you could contact Dr. Hal Huggins if you wanted to learn more about mercury toxicity. So I did that. Called up Dr. Hal Huggins and I said, hey, I want to learn about mercury toxicity. And the person on the other end said, fine, you're a dentist? I sure am. Proud of it. Well, good. You have to come out to Colorado. What? I'm not coming out to Colorado. Listen, I have three children, two cats, a husband, and a dental practice. I'm not coming out to Colorado. Why don't you just send me a book about it? That's how naive I was. I really thought that you could just read a book and you would know all that you needed to know about mercury toxicity. Well, there was a book, but it didn't teach me everything I needed to know, but it did teach me a lot. The name of that book was It's All in Your Head by Dr. Hal Huggins. I highly recommend everybody read that book. Well, to make a long story short, I wound up going out to Colorado. When I got there, there was a classroom of about a hundred dentists. And the first thing they did was sit me in a chair, slap a tourniquet on my arm and take two vials of blood. I thought that was very strange. I'd never been to a course where they asked for blood first. Kind of thought maybe it could be a cult. I, I didn't know. I wasn't sure. Well, I, I cooperated. I went ahead and gave them the blood. And then Dr. Huggins proceeded to talk about mercury toxicity and how mercury affects the body in so many ways. After three days of mercury, 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 on the fourth day, Dr. Huggins announces that we are now going to receive our blood chemistries back from Colorado Springs General Hospital. Yay, I finally get to see my blood chemistry. Then he says, I'm going to show you how mercury can change somebody's body chemistry and you can look at their chemistry and see just how sick they are. I was very interested. 
Well, I was also very lucky that day because my blood chemistry was the first one that went up on a huge overhead projector. For those of you who are too young, an overhead projector is something where you put a piece of paper in and it shines up on a big screen. We didn't have PowerPoint or computers in those days. Well, my chemistry went up first and Dr. Huggins' comment was like something like this. He said, Ooh, we got a sick puppy here. Whose blood is this? And I very cautiously raised my hand. I said, uh, it's mine. He said, well, he said, so Blanche, he said, how long have you had cancer? What? Excuse me? Where do you see that? Well, they had circled it in red. And he was right. They had circled it in red. As a matter of fact, they circled it in red many times because they wanted me to see it, that I had 1% metablastic cells. Hmm. I had no clue what that meant. And I said, well, 1%, that's, that's not a big number. Dr. Huggins said, well, 1% you're sick, 2% you're in the hospital, and 3% you're dead. Hmm. Now I was concerned. He knew what was going on. Then he asked me a very interesting question. Remember, I had just met this man. I'd only spent three days sitting in class. He then asked me, so Blanche, just how many root canals do you have in your head? I just met this man. How does he know I have root canals? How did he know that? I said, I have five. His comment to me was good. He says, well, you're going to get them taken out, right? Hell no. I'm still a New Yorker. Hell no. What are you, nuts? Why would I get my teeth taken out? I'm very proud of the fact that I'm a dentist. I'm proud of the fact that I have 32 teeth. And you know what? I plan on going to my grave with 32 teeth. And he looked at me straight in the eye and said, that's exactly what you're doing. Hmm. I wasn't sure. I thought maybe I'd been insulted. I wasn't sure. Well, I thought about it. And I continued studying with Dr. Huggins. And it did take me probably three months before I was emotionally prepared to take out my teeth. It was either keep the teeth and die of leukemia or take out the teeth and l take a chance and live a longer, happier life. Well, I took the chance and I decided to get my teeth taken out and my 18 mercury fillings. When I did that in January of 1993, my brain fog disappeared overnight. My leukemia took a lot longer, three and a half weeks. That is a lot longer. That's 21, more than 21 times longer. But I was very happy. I was especially happy, believe it or not, about the brain fog disappearing. Because when I was a kid, I couldn't read a sentence without going back to the beginning again and again and again. I couldn't read a paragraph without going back to the beginning and reading the paragraph again. In third grade, I was put in remedial reading. I never graduated from remedial reading. I was in remedial reading through junior high school, high school, and then college. When I got to college, they told me that I did not qualify for English 101 because my reading comprehension was so poor. So they suggested that I take a remedial course, which I did. They also made the recommendation that I take the Evelyn Wood reading course. I took that course twice. So I learned how to move my finger just like that and how to read very quickly. Still had no comprehension, but I learned how to read. That's the main reason why I decided to become a music major. Musicians don't do a lot of reading. We see music, but we've seen it all before and we get plenty of opportunity to practice, practice, practice when we have to do a performance. So I was very happy in my music world. When I decided to become a dentist, I was really concerned about the reading issue. I talked to a friend of mine who was a dentist and I told him about my problem. He assured me, don't worry about it, Blanche. Dentists don't read either. They memorize a lot of stuff. And you've got a high IQ, so you can memorize stuff, but don't worry about the reading. Very good. So I did go to dental school, and I got through dental school. And it wasn't until 1993 that I could read a whole paragraph and not once have to go back to the beginning. My comprehension is so good now, and my reading is so good. I usually read about six books a week, 
It is incredible. I was so excited. I couldn't wait until the clinic opened the next day to, to grab Dr. Huggins and say, Dr. Huggins, I can read. He kind of looked at me funny. I probably sounded like Gomer Pyle. He said, of course you could read. I said, no, 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 you don't understand. I can read. I couldn't read before. I always had this kind of droning in the back of my head. And when my fillings were taken out, the droning disappeared. Dr. Huggins said, oh, that's, that's great news. I said, no, it's, it's more than great news. I'm going to spend the last two months of my life reading. And he said, oh, don't be silly. Your cancer is going to go away too. You'll see. You'll see. And he was right. I, I didn't believe him at the time, but he was right. It did go away. And so that's the reason why I'm so passionate about biological dentistry. I think dentistry has done people a tremendous disservice by not giving informed consent, by not telling the patients, this is what we're putting in your mouth. This is what it can do to you. Do you want it or do you want something else? That has never happened in the United States or any other country for that matter. And I'm a firm believer of informed consent. I also believe that patients should not have any metal in their mouth. Now, I once heard a colleague of mine say, wait a minute, Blanche, the truth is, there's no such thing as non-metallic dentistry. Ooh, he got me there. Now we're being really picky, picky, picky. Because even in the plastic composite dental materials that we put in people's mouths, there's always the smallest, smallest, smallest little part of iron oxide that is used for coloring. Otherwise, everybody's teeth would be paper white. That would look really strange. We would look like we were in a discotheque all the time. So I have to concede that even the composites have a very, very, very small amount of iron oxide in them. But the rest of the dentistry is really non-metallic. So why am I so concerned about non-metallic dentistry? Well, because as I continued my studying, and I went on to Capital University in Washington, D.C., received after two years of studying a doctorate in integrative medicine. I learned a lot about the meridians in the body. I learned a lot about Chinese medicine. I learned a lot about the energy flow in the body and how things in our environment affect that energy flow. That's when I decided that people really shouldn't have metal in their mouth because it will affect the meridian that goes through the tooth. So what do I mean by that? Well, the Chinese, 6,000 years ago, the Chinese had developed the meridian system. And so they knew that there were major meridians and minor meridians in the body. For instance, there's the heart meridian, there's the gallbladder meridian, there's all kinds of different meridians. They all have English names and Chinese names. Every meridian in the body runs through a tooth. So if you have metal in the tooth, it's going to affect the meridian. The meridian will have to accommodate itself or lose energy. Now, there's some of you out there are saying, well, wait a minute, Blanche. You have earrings in your ears. Huh, that's right. I, I have a little bit of vanity in me. I love wearing my earrings. But when I go home, the first thing that comes off are the earrings. The second thing is my bra. <laughs> but the first thing that comes off are the earrings. And so when I'm sleeping at night, my meridians get a chance to restore themselves through that acupuncture point, through that meridian point. As it is with your teeth, if you have metal in your mouth, you can't take the metal crown off at night and put it on your night table and allow the meridian to restore itself. It just doesn't happen. So that meridian is always out of balance. I have tremendous respect for the energy fields of the body. The truth is we are energetic beings. We are more empty space and electrons floating around than we are stuff. The more you study, the more you'll realize that that's very, very true. So this is why I'm so passionate about biological dentistry. Because in biological dentistry, we make sure that anything we put into your mouth is not going to make you sicker or not going to make you sick. 
And so that usually means dentistry that is non-metallic. We want to do work for you that's going to make you healthier. We want to do work for you that puts no stress on the teeth that you do have. And that is my philosophy. I don't believe people should have metal in their mouth. I don't believe that people should have dead teeth in their mouth. I don't believe that people should have holes in their teeth or holes in their bone. And those, if those are there, they should be repaired. That is my philosophy. And um, if you'd like to learn more, check out my website, www.drblanchegruby.com.